Hello and welcome to Once More with Feeling Hurt Retrospective Part 4 Volume 2 Electric Boogaloo Volume <laughs> Hurt 2 Hurt Harder <laughs> um, So yeah, covering Volume 2 uh, after a considerable break because all technology broke all the time it was kind of nightmarish Anywho, um, first things first about this album. This, of all the albums I've listened to, is my personal favourite. It's pretty damn solid, honestly. Yeah. Um, reading up on things, it's quite interesting to look into, because prior to having the mixing engineer that they did, the original mixing engineer produced it so poorly because they paid a large sum of money, um, it actually caused Jay Lauren Wentz to go into a nervous breakdown. Wow. Um, they actually had to throw him in a van before the cops came. Well, some serious business right there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He actually thought that his life was over. He, he couldn't handle how bad it was. Wow. That's pretty bad. So you really if you spend loads of money over this something that's completely useless to you, it's also part of your job. Mm. You really have to wonder how bad it must have been if if it caused that su- that bad a reaction. Mm. You, you know, in the case if they took hundreds of thousands or something to do it master and end up something that's completely unusable. Mm. I mean, I know when um, the Global Music did it with the um, Emperor box set vinyl, mm-hmm. it was about over a grand per copy. Yeah. And it was shit, so how did we do the whole lot? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite fascinating to find that out, that it was so bad that it, he thought that it could not be saved. Hmm. I don't know how bad it could be. I mean, it's because if you could just think, oh, well, well I'm bankrupt, hmm. which is, you know, always not a good thing to be. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, um, it actually received a 94% on Absolute Punk, I'm not familiar with the magazine, but seeing as that's one of the key professional ratings... I think a professional uh, kind of publication giving it a high review is never a bad thing. Yeah. And also, All Music gave it four and a half stars. So, uh, we'll go into key things about the songs as we go along. Um, But yeah, it's interesting to note that there's um, six songs from the first and second albums... Yeah, there is a lot of stuff that's been for this. Yeah, but weirdly, because of how they're used, they actually work quite well together. Yeah, I think it does fit the theme of the album. Mm. Um, yeah, going into the album itself, um, first song is... Well, this is where we get into really interesting, because it is one of the songs from previous album. It's Summer's Lost. Mm. But it's like... It's a good start out. But it's like three times as long. Yeah, let's say that's, the original version not This one's like nearly seven minutes or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Although it does have a six for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, it's six minutes ten, whereas the original was yeah. less than two minutes. Um, but the thing is, it doesn't feel like it's been artificially lengthened. No, it feels like it should be that length. Yeah, I mean. It, it maintains the feel of the original version with the slow, gradual build-up that um, Hurt are very good at doing. And then the successive verses explode, and it's sort of like, holy shit! <laughs> really? When I first listened to them, I think this might actually be one of my favourite songs as well. Mm. So. I mean, the reason I say it doesn't feel artificially lengthened is they've act- they actually went to the effort of writing more verses for it and it's not a sort of the verses feel repeated or anything like that. Yeah, some new stuff. I guess maybe they took the idea that, like, okay, once again, that didn't do with the last album, actually. Mm. So, hmm, maybe we can actually expand upon this. Yeah. Uh, it, I'm not going to harp on too long about it, but it really works to sort of bring things home and set a tone for the album. Hmm. It's a good opener, actually. I mean, I think some of the other, well, the other albums we've done, it's been like, eh, the first song just doesn't catch my attention that much. Mm. This, on the other hand, this is like, hey, hey, fucking listen to me now. Yeah. Um, it sounds wonderful, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it, 
the way it's framed and the sound that it's given it really brings to the forefront the idea of dying relationships and general loss and things like that you know sort of summer mm. romances and all that sort of thing and how they can end in a blink of an eye that sort of thing I think it's interesting because you know it pretty much summarises the kind of side of things of her do that I actually really like mm. so it's not going to go there's going to generic new metal sound some of the stuff has it's more kind of experimental side mm excellent opener and really good at sort of following on from the previous album well we were saying well you know, how well the albums work together mm. so mm. an impressive sound to it yeah so. which definitely feels necessary yeah it seems like an overall kind of darker sound to the first album even which mm. is something quite impressive yeah <laughs> well the first the volume mm. um next is a new song uh ten ton brick which honestly i don't care for that much yeah, fair enough it is very much a new metal song. There's no two ways about it. Um, yeah, it's with of everything on this album, it's probably the most new metal kind of sounding one. Yeah, uh, I think I probably appreciate it more for what it represents than how it actually sounds. But it's not like an overall bad. It's, it's kind of the better side of any metal sounds as well. Mm. It's a bit like a bit of disturbed actually. By this. Yeah, it, it's the sort of song that deals with personal rage or anger at what you are anger at how people react to you um frustration with burdens and pressures applied by the world's attitude in general which is a very this is where you risk being pigeonholed as a new metal band yeah I think there's a it's kind of story people here that there's kind of the negative associate them with mm. it doesn't sound kind of radio friendly yeah or at least as radio friendly as you can be. Yeah. You can't even make here on Kerrang if Kerrang actually still does music, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Kerrang hasn't gone MTV style yet. Yet. <laughs> Quite positive it does, though. Yeah. Curiously enough, it actually got an award uh, during SESAX. I, I don't know. I've never heard of it before. Um, okay. Uh, 13th Annual New York Music Awards. I knew that was a thing. Apparently it is. <laughs> There's so many awards these days, though. Uh, to be fair, if it's only the 13th, that's probably why I've not heard about it, because, you know me, I mainly know about old things. You fucking might do. <laughs> if this band isn't at least 19 years old, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Actually, that was pretty much me about 10 years ago. <laughs> um, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was a curmudgeonly old git before I became a 26-year-old. No, you were just here listening to new bands. Yeah. Oh, no, not really. I suppose you are, but kind of not. Well, comparatively new. Yeah, I think all of us listen to, you know, a lot of stuff in different eras. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, lyrics are, are very much new metal style. It's sort of like, a ten-ton brick is making me sick, breaking my bones with the weight of it. Weight would grow with ah, weight would grow with each new soul. Buried the fine lines make b big black holes. Who am I supposed to be? Not like you give a fuck about me, but who am I supposedly when I'm finally done? Hmm. Well, the thing I have noticed about this though is that this kind of uses some points that sound quite similar to Abuse of Sid and also Aftermath and Lone of the Sea. It was interlinked together quite nicely. Yeah. All the times you use little bits here and there that sound similar to each other they're kind of very, very connected. Mm. That interconnectivity is probably what I appreciate Ten Ton Brick more for than what it actually is in, its, in and of itself. I mean it's an okay song. It's probably well placed at being at the start because then you know it, the more serious stuff. Yeah. If it was the very first song, then it would turn listeners off quite immediately. Being the second song, it means that listeners won't have expectations either way for it for the album to be worse or better mm. than this. They would just you never know, heard a six minute long song. Yeah. Which is pretty good first, so Hmm. Yeah. I mean ten ton brick Let's see. I mean, it's a three minute fifty song, so it's not exactly going to overshadow it, anything. No, it's relatively short. Yeah. Uh, I mean, might as well go into Aftermath because that's actually a far better song. I don't think it is a very good song. Yeah. But what? It's not the song that's designed to work together with uh, Abusive Sailor as well. Hmm. 
Um, well, a lot of links with lyrically and stylistically. Yeah, I mean, for me, when when our aftermath starts playing, because it flows so directly from Ten Ton Brick. I don't actually it doesn't register for me that the songs have changed until about a minute <laughs> into it well, it's interesting because it kind of goes from you know straight up kind of new metal heaviness into the acoustic passage but it really flows well yeah it sounds quite a bit different but it still feels as if it's you know a continuation rather than just an next one on the album yeah I think the reason it they engineered it as flowing like that is because it's very much discussing sort of concepts of mental instability and consequence of distance between the singer and the loved one you know um, mental instability can cause divides and mm. ten ton brick flowing into it, it it does work together but I don't I personally feel that that's the only way ten ton brick can work in actual context mm, yeah I can see that I think I like about um, Aftermath is it kind of has the acoustic kind of build up mm. it kind of kicks into actual proper form in about a minute or so in. Mm. it's just getting a lot darker yeah I mean because of the ambiguity with the lyrics uh, it's very un- open to interpretation you know loved one could be a friend a relative or romantic loved one you know you, somebody take me away from the darkness somebody take this from me if anyone's out there, if anyone hears me, somebody take this from me. I was beginning to think I had lost my mind, fell upon it hard, and fell upon my hardest times. But the way she lit the room at night, cast shadows to their gloom, and I still dream of your perfume, I would do anything to be with you. Now, on face value, you could interpret that as a romantic... Um, it's intended to be a romantic loved one but you could easily interpret it to be sort of like you know a very close relative like grandmother aunt mother whatever Mm. i mean especially when you consider songs like one last goodbye which is specifically (laughs) about the lead uh, what is it uh the lead singer and guitarist I think it's guitarist. Yeah. yeah. Um, of Anathema's mother dying and um, just wishing to be to see her once again. You, you know, this is this is why you can interpret it in many different ways because that song can easily be interpreted in the way that this on face value seems. Yeah, I, mean, I think the best part of the song is mostly because kind of the um, angel voice part. Uh, Adel voice. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, like, is it German again? Um, Edelweiss is a type of. Um, let me. I was actually looking this up because I was sort of like, what is the significance of this? Um, Edelweiss is a um, is a type of flower that grows in the Alps. Okay. To native inhabitants, it symbolised rugged purity of the Alpine region. Okay. So that could be why Edelweiss is used, because it's sort of like, well, we're trying to emphasize the idea of purity. But there's that, when it goes to that part of the song, it's, it's sort of like hugely impure for me. Yeah. Uh, well, I really like it anyway, but I mean, it's just like, whoa, that's good. Cool. Yeah. I, that, that is an excellent and inspired part of the song. It really brings things to the forefront. Oh, which album was it this was on originally? Was uh, it um, Conservate? Uh, no, After, Aftermath was, is a volume 2 original. Where was it? I could have heard this one before though. Uh, Maybe it's because I was listening to all the other stuff. I think it... Let me just double check. Um, yeah, no, it's a volume 2 original. Oh, fair um, Yeah. Again, a short song. Uh, but... Good though. Yeah, effective... And then it flows into Abuse of Sid. Directly, and it, it's a reason we return to some mm. And, again, this is where we get into them dramatically improving on the original. Yeah. I mean, I think, unlike some of the other things, it does actually sound quite similar to the original, but mm. the little changes they made make it sound even better. Yeah, I think... The production values are way higher as well. Yeah, it's mainly the... the pr- kind of it's mainly the production value which improves it, and 
actually gives a certain energy that wasn't in the original, I think. Yeah. I think it's one of the best songs, whichever version you listen to. Yeah. Um, because of the placement of these three songs, because they flow into each other, it actually emphasises sort of concepts of frustration, deterioration of relationships, um, the various pressures that mental illnesses can place on them, all that sort of thing, which kind of raises questions as to whether they engineered the pattern of this whole album around those concepts, you know. They they didn't just want common themes, they wanted a theme that flowed throughout the album. Mm, quite possible. But it's pretty because all the songs they brought back from other areas, I probably thought, okay, these songs actually really work with this concept, so let's bring them back, mm. upgrade them a little bit. Yeah. Um, again, not much to talk to, because it's very similar to the original. It's more how it works with the concepts of the album in general. Yeah. Um, finally, after three episodes of teasing it, <laughs> I get to talk about not only my favourite song of Hurts, but also my favourite version of it. Yeah. Um, Interesting that actually does, it feels in the right place as well. Yeah. Uh, Alone with the Sea. I've been waiting, it's all sort of like, oh, I just want to get to volume two so I can talk about this song, because <laughs> I love this version. Uh, the stripped out sound, the... Extra verse. Yeah, the <laughs> extra refrain, which really brings out um, a very impactful aspect of the overall themes that it's very easy to identify. The extra refrain is, um, oh god, it's suddenly gone out of my head. You know, it's sort of like, I love this song, and suddenly I can't remember the the bit of it that I'm yeah, talking well, I, about. I love it because love. So you don't listen to much because I do. Yeah. <laughs> I had reasons, but I forgot them because I'm too busy laughing at. Um, uh, the refrain uh, goes. Uh, I've strangely become immune to the thought of seeing you, and the smell of cheap perfume is just a ring around the moon. Trying to find the lyrics, but the fucking thing isn't showing me the right version, it's showing me the consummation version of the lyrics, which is not helpful. Um, but uh things like stripping out because in the original there was this sort of fog horny connecting bit um in this oh, version. Absolutely. Huh? Well, still there, isn't it? No, it's been stripped yeah, out and replaced with a sort of acoustic, well, it's vocals. Um, a very yearning, just, it's almost like a howl. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about the opening foghorn, I'm talking about the... Oh, okay, I was thinking... <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, the opening foghorn is still there, it's just, um, it was sort of this, it was a very dull hum type horn thing going on between the verses. Yeah, I think I agree with this being the better version. Mm. Um, it has brought me to tears. Uh, I will happily admit that it's so impactful that it, if it doesn't stir something in you, then you, you probably just not experience the sort of emotions that are being discussed. Yeah, which I know you have. So. Mm. I mean, the whole... Uh, strangely become immune I mean, I'm going through problems with that at the moment um, but the whole idea of someone suddenly becoming incapable of feeling anything you know not just romantic but even platonic love for a close friend it's a very resonating effect um, I, I would say more, but I'd probably just end up gushing too much and it would be just an hour-long episode of Just Alone with the Sea. I'm going to check back on his channel in a week for his hour-long episode about Alone with the Sea. <laughs> I might actually do that. I know you could do it, that's the thing. Yeah, which is worrying. Well, considering I've written more than one essay-length article about California before, I'm pretty sure you could do the same for her. Yeah. Well, actually, I'll probably more be able to do that with Devin Townsend. Well, yeah. I mean, you can probably write, like, 10,000 words of Devin Townsend. Mm. Just... Per yeah. <laughs> Just discussing the core concepts of the ver of the four um, 
DTP albums. Yeah, I mean, they're all content albums, so... Yeah. The type of thing you make it no right about. Hmm. Um, yeah. Next song, Talking to God. This is a bit of a... This is an angry song. <laughs> it's a case of, no, why are you talking to God, blah, blah, blah. You can't do that, it's not going to help you. Mm. Why are you not doing anything to help me, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it sort of like reintroduces the whole frustrations with religion, uh, all, all that sort of thing. But it also brings in sort of the complications with finding yourself without someone to talk to because the person is preoccupied with whatever they seem to find important at the time. Yeah. Um, it's an ang- it's a very angry but also a very desperate song. It's sort of screaming at the person in question to just let you in. And pleading to be helped yourself, you know, it's all like, I can help you, you can help me. Why will you not talk to me? Yeah, well, I think we all know someone that is very much like that. Yeah, if not many people. Mm. I think it's probably more common. Some people are like that, other than the other way around. Yeah, it's all like that. The person being talked to, you know, they're talking to God, and it's all like they don't even know for certain that God's actually there or is actually listening depending on your whim we're yeah. agnostics so we're sort of like well <laughs> he might be there he might, he might not be, God, be but we don't know yeah. he's probably just hanging out at a bar somewhere <laughs> <laughs> he's probably just looking if there is a god he's looking over earth going what the fuck did i do <laughs> wrong Wait, not for the religion goes yeah <laughs> once again it's something we could get distracted and do about and talk for hours yeah <laughs> But if you if you want that sort of thing, go to the Bible Reloaded. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, the the lyrics are sort of. I mean, the chorus is explicitly, "How can you talk to God when you won't talk to me?" Sure, what that song reminds me of. It reminds me a little bit of Sun Garden. Probably. Yeah, I can hear that. Um, the opening lines. Mother is busy, she won't even miss me, and so busy praying, and won't see me waiting. I hate all your reasons, they just point to Jesus. You can't be awakened when you're not mistaken. And I hate yeah, you. Yeah, that's like being angry about the religion. Yeah. <laughs> and I hate your voice, and that fucked up noise, and your cliches, and things that you'd say to me. When they burned me then, it still sears today, embedded in memory that won't change. I kind of feel like this could be played over a let's play of Binding of Isaac. <laughs> well, since you mentioned something about Mother Won't Listen, it's like, the Isaac! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, all, it's got the themes that are common in new metal stuff, but it's definitely not a new metal song. I wouldn't even say it's a metal song, really. It's very rocky. Yeah, it's definitely... It's, the band is kind of blurred, usually, but... It, now this, it's not like a metal song or anything. It's most metal. Yeah. <laughs> now, it definitely falls into the category of this is a rock song, not a metal song. It's not necessarily a problem. Mm. I mean, a lot of bands don't, really. Yeah. Well, Hurt is one of those bands who are very good at just blending genres and making them work with each other. Well, it's a good way to do things. Mm. I mean, it has variety, you can keep a kind of core sound, but then you can switch it up every time. Mm. You think it bored. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of bands that don't do bored in <laughs> Dragon Force. Um. Oh, we can wait for the Dragon Force rating when we do the Baby Metal review. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, it does, personally, it But to be fair, that would have been metal, it means it actually had two songs. Mm. Because uh. of Dragon Force, you finally made your second song. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, uh, enough things for other episodes. Um, the next song, again, a return from a previous album, Loaded. I, I still don't know why it's titled in that spelling. <laughs> Probably something to do with the whole drug paraphernalia, you know, that's a spelling specific to when someone's getting high or something like that. I don't know. I think we did discuss this last time we did it as well. Yeah. Uh, Who's we going to? It's a good enough loop. I mean, from what I recall, it doesn't sound particularly different to the original. Yeah, it's... Well, there's potentially a good reason why. Right. It was a poll vote. Oh, wait, did they ask fans, like, what songs would you like to see remastered or whatever? Yeah. Okay, fair 
so that's probably why there's not been much done to it. I personally am not a fan of its presence on the album. Well, it seems to be, you know, tackling themes that are not necessarily that close to the rest of the album. Yeah. I mean, I, kind of related, but not as much as a lot of other songs seem to be. Yeah. I, I still like the song, it's just I don't like it being on the album. I think they shouldn't have bothered including it. It doesn't quite fit, even musically either. Yeah. Which is kind of strange, since you've just been talking about having a lot of variety music. But. Yeah. Well, there's having variety, and then there's things that just are... They stick... It sticks out like a sore thumb on the album. Well, it's a good, I said, it once again sounds very similar to the original version, which is... That album sounds quite a bit different to the volume albums anyway. Yeah. I mean, you you can interpret it as working in terms of themes in a, some sort of capacity with the whole mental problems, relationships, all that sort of thing. Drugs or stuff, yeah. Yeah. But overall, its presence is awkward. It, I don't know it's just because of, uh, because of the letter it exists in general, but there's just a bad place in the soundtrack-wise. Mm. It would be different if it was a different place, like at the end or something. Possibly. Uh, we'll get When we get to the last song in the album... That'll be an interesting discussion. Well, yeah, that song was very much an ending song. Mm. Well, we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, oh, we get to that before we get to it. Uh huh. Uh, natural progression of time. Uh, the next song, again, another song from previous album. Better. Uh, as far as the songs in this album go, this is. Probably the other one that doesn't particularly stand out for me. Mm. I think it really stands out. Made that much in the first place, and even here, it doesn't really do much for me. Yeah. Um. I. I. It's okay for me. Um. I think it's a bad song. It's just yeah. that compared to a lot of others. Yeah. I mean, considering the following songs from it and the prior songs, except for Loaded, it is a bit of a much of a muchness on the album. Um. But it does. Thematically, it does work with the rest of the album, I think. Well, so loaded it does, yeah. Mm. Um, certain bass builds I've noticed were stripped out from the original. For some reason we never hear the song. I think it went to the Rebels. Hmm? I think it went to the Rebels a little bit, actually. Just, just the opening of the thing, the guitar playing. In a way. Um, yeah, not much to say, because there's only been slight changes with Better. It is different from the original. You say it's better? <laughs> well, I personally would say it's better, but depends on your whim. It is very much kind of minor differences, though. Mm. Next song, Assurance. This is just pretty good. Mm. This is a new one as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the only one of it, basically, it's a case of new one, new one, one from a previous album, new one. That's always nice. I think you kind of get a little bit worrying when you think, oh, half the songs in the album are literally just region versions mm. of previous songs. But they've done a good job of upgrading some of them. Yeah. And with at least two of them, they've got extra stuff going on. Yeah, and of course, depending on how much of a pain in the ass it was to actually get there on original albums, mm. people probably at least could hear these songs even if they can't get hold of content making, for example. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Assurance. Again, that works with the overall themes. Um, it feels like it actually would tie in quite well with um, Aftermath. Yeah, I can hear that. I think I really like about the song is it's got a little piano in the background, or synth or whatever it is. Do yeah. It's kind of... I didn't really notice it at first, but I kind of... Uh, when I listen to it, I'm like, oh, I hear that. That's mm. quite nice. Feels like an admission to a realisation of someone who could genuinely help make life better for the singer. Um... Yeah, the title, the title of the series, yeah, it seems very much like... There are people that do actually pay it notice. Mm. It's good uh, to know that however hard they are to come by, there is generally someone around there somewhere that will be able to come. Yeah, but that does feel like there's a distance because for whatever reason this person can't quite yet see it within him. Hmm. Uh, but there's certainly a case of also what I'm thinking of. Um, potential, I guess. Hmm. But this song has the best lyrics of I I I I I I I I I I um, I've seen the way you look at me. I've seen you waiting patiently. I'm fine. Well, I lied. If what we are is feeling low, I'd fear this if I had a soul. But you're still mine. I was afraid of being chained. I thought a woman who could mend and bend would learn my deepest depths and thoughts. 
and it's just one more round, one more, one more round, and I'm done. Mm. Um, so you need assurance that everything's going going to be fine, because you're just a woman who's everything good in my life. And though we've been over, weeping over our last goodbyes, well, I learned to live with these fatal gifts, and still you're mine. Uh, oh God, I. I don't know why, but I th I think my memory omitted the la da 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 da. da. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, what the? Okay, you suddenly forgot your lyrics. Well, I always wonder whenever that kind of thing happens. So I'm like, is that the actual lyrics, or do you just couldn't think of the lyrics that part? He decided just to make random sounds. Mm. Maybe he was sort of like when he recorded it, he was half cut and it's sort of like, I can't remember bits of this song, fuck it. Um, <laughs> it's much as the um, live version of Truth by Sita on the live album. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't, if I, remember, if I remember the truth, well, I don't know if that works. But uh, the kind of opening version of live version is like, if I, if I, if I, it's like, if I could remember the lyrics, I would say them to you. <laughs> Just makes me think to, um, Weird Al smells like Nirvana. Ah, <laughs> uh, Weird Al. The Weird Al's been around for forever now. Yeah. but well, uh, makes you feel old. I think he's been around since the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, he must have been, because he did another one Rides the Bust, and when he was... He pretty much does his parodies in conjunction with when the originals come out. Yeah, it's only something comes out, and he's like, oh, well, I think I'm going to do a parody of this. Hmm. Makes sense that they do something that's topical at the time. Yeah, which is in complete contradiction to what we're doing. Yep, that's just do. That was what we're just pretty for, really. Mm. If didn't you be mostly to be perturbated, those are relevant to the current time. We're thinking mm. about this year within yeah. the last month or so. But mm. uh, anyway, um, yeah, assurance. I personally say it's one of the best songs on the album. It's very different to the other one. It's kind of a lot. It's more of an uplifting kind of style. It was it makes it stand out a lot, I think. Yeah. Um, next, we've got On the Radio. Which is, what's the song this is a single? It should be. Let me just check. I think a song called On the Radio actually be On the Radio. It would be pretty cool. Uh, well, they did release alternate mixes of both Talking to God and On the Radio through their MySpace. God. It was, it was an individual release of. God, that that just goes to show how old this band is. They had a MySpace. <laughs> a lot of bands do have MySpace. A lot of bands do have some bands. I think still use MySpace. I was like, really? Yeah, well, MySpace... Anyone else use MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> MySpace has actually basically become a music site now. Pretty much. I don't remember actually having my own MySpace. I remember having MySpace. Totally hot shit. Um, how, how things have changed. Hmm. I mean, I had to go back home and use MSM Messenger. <laughs> That doesn't even work anymore. It's Microsoft to get over, of course, because Microsoft do that. Mm. I said Microsoft to the EA software. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. I guess games are software, but you know what I mean. Mm. Oh yeah, something I forgot to mention in the preamble, but I can do as a wind-up for the uh, discussion, is the instruments that were used on the album, but we'll come back to that. Yeah, uh, on the radio, that feels very much like it connects with talking to God. Hmm, I can hear that. Because it feels like a desperate sort of trying to get the person to listen to him through through any means necessary, because it's sort of like, um, but somewhere on the radio, could you hear me? Can you hear me? Somewhere on the radio, can you hear me? Because I'm screaming. Well, yeah, that's definitely the same kind of vein, I guess. Yeah. I think it's musically, it's quite simplistic. Mm. Quite a lot of the stuff, I mean, a pretty regular beat to it, very basic chorus structure. It's just like it is designed to be a kind of song to grab attention, not, mm. not only, you know, thematically, but also for the band as a, well, as a band. Yeah, well, considering it was, again, it was one of their albums, re ah, it was one of the albums released through Capital, so... Mm. I think quite like it, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's not one of their it's one not one of their best songs, but it's a good song. It's a solid song. Decidedly average. <laughs> I'd say above average. Mm, more average for them. No, no, sorry. Yeah. More average in general even, but not for them. Yeah. 
it's above average in general. It's sort of like three, three point five, so slightly above average. But for them, it's decidedly average because we know. They really can do better. They really can do worse. Yeah. Although generally their worst is still average in general. Not always that they are. Nothing that really stands out as being god awful. Mm. At least not so far. Well, yeah. We, we can't talk about the future, man. <laughs> there will. What's up with the stone in the song? It's really cool. Sorry. I don't know what the instrument that is. Um. Is that violin again? Probably violin. Well, there's a couple of instruments that it could be. There's the dobro. Which is basically, you know, those very special sorts of guitars that sort of um, have. They look like they've got a dustpin lid under the strings. All oh, those things. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a violin to me. Hmm. Um, I mean, violins were used, so. There's also. It's a it violin that sounds kind of like a saxophone. Hmm. It's a weird combination. But... Yeah. There was also a banjo used. <laughs> Freaking banjos. And, I think the, this yeah. and there, uh, it says it's string arrangement, so that could be all sorts of things, so cellos, violins, violas, yeah, yatagans. It could happen. Hmm? Man, just when I was in Japan, seeing someone actually playing a shamisen was pretty cool. <laughs> Turns out someone's playing a sitar in the corner. <laughs> yeah, after on the radio, you have et al. The last of the repeat songs. I'm not sure to think of this version. It doesn't quite have much, as much of a punch as the original, I think. Mm. I remember the opening had a, lot, a much grimier opening to it. Yeah, the I, original, but this feels... Kind of lackluster. Yeah, it feels much more stripped down, and it's one of those cases where the stripped down feel doesn't quite work for it. Mm. I have realised... There's a benefit of having two different versions, as you can choose the one you want. Hmm? There's two different versions, if you can choose the one you sound better. Yeah. Um, there's no change to lyrics from what I can hear. Uh, no. It is... The original sounds better in this case. There's not really much more to say about it. <laughs> I know we kind of... We have glossed over it, but literally there is not much more to speak about it. I mean, its placement on the album, again, is kind of weird. Because it kind of feels like he's going back on himself, you know, all the things he's been saying throughout the album. It feels like he's going sort of like, actually, no, all of, all of what I was saying was bullshit. Well, maybe that's the point, I guess. Mm. He's going to be doing all this stuff, and like, oh, maybe we're going through this, maybe there is hope, especially after, after assurance. Mm. Maybe actually there isn't anything, oh god. <laughs> There's something about it, it sounds kind of teeny, I guess. Hmm. I know what's up with that. There's something about it that sounds off compared to the original. Yeah. I can't quite place what it is. Hard to say, really. There's pretty much no changes, really. No. Aside it's from. Slight, quite the slight different mastering that didn't quite help it. Yeah. The, original kind of, the mastering in the original wasn't exactly high quality, but it, it worked in the benefit of the song, I think. Yeah. Because it was it's a much. Bad <laughs> it was a much rawer feeling. It's just going to say actually, because I think the original is one of my favourites, but um, mm -hmm. that's because it just doesn't do it justice. Yeah. Um, lastly, we've got Thank You For Listening. Oh, thank you. Mm. It, it, I mean, it does, li it literally feels like the singer is thanking the audience themselves. Well, considering the kind of things that I've heard about them, it doesn't surprise me that's actually what is intended. Yeah. So they've like, made all these albums up until this point and haven't had that much chance to know become popular because mm. they say oh yeah people that have noticed us people that do like us thank you yeah I mean, the closing lines are I traded my life for you did all that you've asked me to so I dedicate this to to the love of you well, I mean if you're an artist making music the thing that you love most presumably would be the fans mm. especially if you're you know, not like a multi-billionaire that doesn't know write their own songs <laughs> I'll be honest mm. uh, I'm just leaving it just seem to care about our fans more than some other people. <laughs> Justin Bieber. Hmm. But look at Bieber, making millions, and he just doesn't seem to give a fuck about his fans. He's yeah. just like, oh, well, fuck you. Meanwhile, you've got Devin Townsend, who <laughs> is Includes sort of... his fans in his songs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we can go on a brief tangent, which is, like, the first proper one, well, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, you've got the Universal Choir, which was literally, he opened things up for people to record themselves doing 
the choir singing for several of his songs <laughs> and send them in. I mean, <laughs> it's sort of like, if you want an example of someone who is actively engaging with their fans, there's your That's guy. Kind of reminds me, it kind of reminds me of what Perfume did. Because mm. um, for that song, Hold Your Hand, basically what they did was the entire music video, they got those fans just to write like the lyrics of the song on their hands. The music video is just all the fans' hands, all the, all the lyrics on. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. So it's just like hundreds of fans just appear with their hands in the video. Yeah. Just spinning out the lyrics of the song. It's pretty damn cool. And you've got bands like Psycho Stick, who, um, when they came over here, their entire set was made from the songs that the fans voted for. Mm. Even Metallica did that, I guess. Mm. Presumably that wasn't like, Lars's idea. <laughs> Fuck Lars Ulrich. But you can tell with some bands, it's like, they actually legitimately care about their fans. Yeah. Other ones, it's like, they don't need to show any sign of it whatsoever. Mm. I mean, well, I mean, this is part of the reason why I fanboy over Devin Townsend, because at a meet and greet, he actually pointed at me and went, I know you! And it's one of those. Yeah, nice. I basically became Rainbow Dash at that point. <laughs> well, I don't know to me, but I know that when California did a meeting great in France, there was a guy there that they recognised who could be into a bunch of that stuff as well. And they were pointing out to him, was like, oh, I bless you. That's the so. thing. I mean, you. this is the thing. You get bands like that, and it's sort of like you can tell they care about their fans. Yeah. Well, you take complete asshole people that manage them. Mm. I know that some of the stuff that happened when I was in uh, California thing in France. It's, about that they, it's quite obvious that the girls themselves wanted to continue with the fans, but the people that managed them said no. Mm. I kind of was like, oh, but I want to, I want to talk to my fans. <laughs> I mean, um, say what we like about Lady Gaga. We're not fans of her music, but we can say this much, linking back to Weird Al. Uh, when Weird Al did his parody, and um, basically what happened was he asked the manager, the manager says, uh, she said that he can't do it. She had no idea about this. When she found out, she went, fuck off. <laughs> of course Weird Al can do the parody. He's fucking Weird Al. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, kind of, that's basically the benchmark for how you know you've made it as a band, if Weird Al wants to make a parody of your song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lady Gaga is not the kind of music I like, but as a person, she seems really interesting. Yeah. There are a few songs that I'll say are actually worth listening to, like um, Born This Way. Um, do good voice. Think about that as well. Huh? Anyway, should we actually you know, talk about the song? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Guitar solos. Lots of guitar solos. Yeah. Oh, God, the guitar I solos. I saved up all the guitar solos from the rest of the album that I didn't really use that many. I thought, okay, we've got all these guitar solos, where do you put them? It's all put them into one song. Yeah. Um, and it's <laughs> one... Weird, but I don't know. And the thing is, when the guitar solos start, it's sort of like... Hey! Oh, God! Oh, 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 oh. There's nearly a seven-minute song and about half of it is a guitar solo. Yeah. It's not quite that much, but... <laughs> it's a good chunk. Yeah, there's a lot of it. Yeah. And it's one of those, oh, my God! Because, uh, personally, at first, I wasn't entirely sold at it being the last song on the album um, it's a great song even from the start even if it does remind me a bit of Pink Floyd listen <laughs> about it better yeah because <laughs> well I know that there'll be lynch mobs if I say what my opinions of Pink Floyd are <laughs> yeah I think I think actually really like it as a final song mm. it just kind of think it's just them going okay then we can do this with fans so they don't even have to you know they usually have the like, same kind of themes in most of their songs. In this case, we're like, we're doing this in the fans. We're going to write something for the fans and we're just going to go completely balls out with it. Mm. I mean, with the solos, it's basically... Although Alone With The Sea is my favourite song, this, musically speaking, with where the solos are concerned... That's, that's the best. That's the best in terms of showing their technical balls. <laughs> technical balls. <laughs> It's all, I mean, I was sort of like, oh god, it's like the ghost of Hendrix has possessed this song. <laughs> if we get a few people going, nope, that's not working. Uh, I'm a purist. And uh, well, you know me, I'm not exactly a purist. Well, neither of us are, really. Yeah, unless it comes to not doing things like deathcore. Ugh. What? Ugh. 
Death Call. Is, Death Call and Nightcore. Worst yeah. controllers. I, because of what you've said about Nightcore, I haven't bothered listening to any because it's all like, you know what? I can do without the irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> Nightcore isn't even a freaking genre. It literally is just taking your existing song and fucking them up. Jesus. There's nothing else to it. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, it's a good ending, though, I believe. Yeah. I mean, it feels like the audience isn't just being thanked for being fans, they're also being thanked for hearing out the singer, you know, all his hearing out all his demons and actually uh, allowing him to vent his frustrations. Yeah, because how many... It seems like, basically, he thought all the songs he's written, he's like, oh, no one wants to listen to me. Mm. Well, maybe if I you know, become a musician and I can say what I want to say, hopefully people will listen to the band and therefore they'll be the ones that listen to what I want to hear. Yeah. And since he knows people that are actually fans of the band, it's like, oh, people actually are listening to my stuff. And presumably some of them are probably taking on board what you're saying and that helps them. Yeah. So. Um, not much else to say on it other than it's an amazing song. It's a great song. Uh, it's a great album. Mm. There are a few uh, peaks and valleys on the album, but it's when... pretty much consistent of the four we've done so far, though, actually. Yeah, I mean, when when you're talking about hurt in terms of peaks and valleys, it's more what is a great song and what is an average song. Mm. as opposed to what is a good song and what is a bad song which we'll be covering when it comes to Goodbye to the Machine there's a couple of songs there's a couple of songs on there that just make me go ah! hate <laughs> um, but anyway uh, yeah uh, that's it for this episode um Hopefully things will go according to plan this time and I'll be able to edit this all together and we'll do the next episode next week. Hopefully. Instead of there being like three weeks in... Well, it was almost a month between episodes, wasn't it? Well, it was due to a lot of sudden computer issues. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, basically my computer just went... I'm going to do everything bad now. <laughs> yeah, um, that's us signing off. That's goodbye from me. Uh, goodbye from me. And um, we'll see you next week. Hopefully. <laughs>